In today's video, I'll be going over how to make component variants based on my last video on auto layout buttons. If you haven't seen that video, I'll be sure to link it in the video description or in the top right information icon where you can go ahead and check it out before listening to this video. To get started, I'm going to be using the same element that I made in the previous video. I just went ahead and renamed it and also changed the color. So we're gonna be starting off with this one. So for this example, we're going to be making different types of buttons because in a real world example of product design, you're typically going to have a few types of buttons, like a primary, a secondary, a destructive, and maybe a warning button. So for this example, I'm going to be showing you how I would go about doing that myself. In no way is this the only way that you can do this. There is definitely preferences to how people do this, but this is just how I like to do it with my team. What I'm going to do here is because I don't want to use this button and then have to make another one and say this is a different component altogether. And then every time I want to change this secondary button that I just made, then I'll go have to go ahead and not only change this one if I have an update to my whole UI, but I'll also have to go ahead and change this one. So with the way that I lay out my component variants makes it so that I will only have to update this in one place. So if I go back to my original example, this button primary, so say that I want a primary button, a secondary button, and a disabled button. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this primary button that I did, and you'll see that this is an instance versus the master component here. But if I take this copy that I made, and I make it its own component. Now I can go ahead and rename this to secondary. And within this secondary one, I have this instance of a primary button, but I can apply different styling to the secondary button and still have it attached to this primary button. So when I make changes to this button, it will update to my other buttons as well. So this is very helpful if you have a few variations of this button and even different sizes. So let's go ahead and make this a secondary styling. So for this example, I'm going to select the instance of this primary button and I'm going to remove the fill. I'm gonna add a stroke, make it the same color and add two width to that. Then I'm also gonna go ahead and change this to the same color as the outline. And you'll see it is still attached to this primary button, even if we do style changes here. So now I have both of these buttons that I can use in the UI and still have them updated from one single source. So this may seem like a very simple example here, which it is, but when you're working on more complex UI elements and you have a system of these, it becomes very useful to be able to do this on different occasions. There are definitely occasions where you won't want to do that. Say, for example, you need different styling and sizing, and you're not able to change the size or add a certain element that you're needing, then you're gonna have to make a new instance of that button as its own master component instead. But for something like buttons, we can use this to our advantage. So I made a copy here, and we're gonna make this a disabled button. So same thing, I'm gonna make this its own master component and I'm going to rename this to disabled. For this example, I'm just going to make this button 50% opacity. So when it's in a white UI element, say for example this frame, then it'll have difference between this primary button and this disabled one. So now I can actually rename these instances and it won't affect any of the other ones. This is really nice because we can change the styling and text and different style elements based on what that UI element needs, but we can also still keep it tied to this original one. So if we go ahead and we have to change the font size of this button, I can just change it in one place and it'll go ahead and update those without updating any of the styling. So as you can see, this can become very helpful when you're working on different UI systems. 
So I hope that video was helpful for you and let me know if you have any other questions on design systems or components that I can help with. And I'll be working on some new videos on my own and be coming out with those over the next few weeks. So be sure to like and subscribe so you know when I have more of those videos coming out. And I hope this was helpful and I'll see you all later.